Hey guys, welcome to my lenses video. Can't even talk today. Um, I was really struggling to work out how to teach you this, but I think if I go through the definitions you need to know, kind of explain how lenses actually work, give you some instructions on how to draw lens diagrams, and then we'll go through them together, some past exam questions so you can actually see how they're constructed. Anyway, so let's look at the following first of all. First of all, what is a convex lens? Well, a convex lens is otherwise known as a converging lens. And if you know what the word converging means, it is actually just a normal English word. It means coming together. So if you've got a couple of rays and they pass through a convex or converging lens, then they'll be brought together and they'll meet behind the lens. An example of use of this is the magnifying glass. A concave lens is a diverging lens, and diverging means spreading out. So if you have rays which pass through a diver diverging lens, they'll spread out so they'll never actually meet on the other side of the lens, and we can use those in glasses to correct short-sightedness. Now the focal length is the distance between the centre of the lens and its point of focus. The principal focus is the point where the parallel rays meet after they pass through the lens. And then lastly, the difference between a real image and a virtual image is that a real image can be formed on a screen and a virtual image cannot. Now, if I move on and I show you this, hopefully this will make it a bit clearer. So with the convex lens, we can see that when the parallel rays pass through it, they then come together, i.e. they converge. And the point where they converge behind the lens is called the focal point. And that's what's going on here. They're meeting. Whereas with a concave lens, we call this a diverging lens, because what happens is these rays come to the lens, but rather than coming together, they spread out, just like this. And so therefore, the focal point, well, what, that's where the parallel rays meet. So that's going to be in front of the lens as opposed to behind. Just to explain some of these lenses and their uses. So here we can see someone that's got the same sort of eye issue that I have. It's a short-sighted person. The reason being that normally rays should meet here. They should meet on the retina, which is back here, because that's where the photoreceptors are. But we can see that they're converging far too early. So that could be because the eyeball's too long or the lens is too strong. So one way or another, we need to cause those rays to spread out a bit. That's where a concave or diverging lens comes in because they, this lens causes the rays to spread out a little bit here so that when they finally hit the lens and the lens brings them back into focus, it'll bring the focal point onto the retina so the person can see more clearly. Thank God these glasses exist, otherwise I literally wouldn't see a thing. If we move on and we look at someone that's long-sighted. So this is what happens to older people. They start needing glasses to read print, like reading books or whatever. So this time, you've got the parallel rays coming in. They're hitting the lens, but the lens is weakened over time. So rather than meeting on the retina here, they're meeting behind the eyeball, behind the retina. So you're going to get a very blurred image here. So instead, you need a convex or converging lens, which is actually going to cause those rays to come in so that when they're brought onto the human lens, they meet nicely on the back of the eyeball here on the retina. I just want to run through the instructions for how to draw the lens diagrams. Um, it will look a bit confusing here until I go through some examples shortly, but I just wanted them all written down so you've actually got some instructions to follow. So first of all, remember that the object, they'll give you that as a little arrow, and then in order to begin your lens diagram, you want to draw a horizontal line from the top of that object arrow to where it hits the lens. Now, depending on when you've, whether you've been given a convex or concave lens, if you've been given a convex lens, then you then want to take a straight line from where it's hit the lens down through the focal point, which will be behind the lens in the case of a convex lens. If you've been given a concave lens, what you're going to do is take the line in front of the lens and through the focal point there. Like I said, it will become clear shortly. The next line is much easier to draw because you're just drawing a diagonal line which runs straight from the top of the object arrow through the middle of the lens. Now, at this point, you should have lines that cross, and where those lines cross, that will be where your image is formed. And you're going to draw a little arrow showing the image, and then based on whether the image is above this horizontal central line or below, that will tell you if your image is upright or inverted. You're going to compare the length of that arrow with the object arrow to tell you if the image is bigger or smaller. We like to say here enlarged or diminished to sound nice and fancy. And then if the image is formed behind the lens, so to the right hand side we know that the image is real and if it's formed in front of the lens then we know that it is virtual. 
So let's have a go at constructing various ray diagrams. This arrow here is supposed to be the object, this is the lens, and these are the focal points. So based on my instructions, first of all, you want to draw a horizontal line from the top of the object, use a ruler and a pencil for this, and then you want to take it through the focal point like that. Oh gosh, I really struggle on the iPad. Next step, you want to draw a diagonal line which runs from the top of the object arrow through the middle of the lens and we'll see where it crosses. Oh, not very good, not very good. Oh, it's supposed to cross through the middle of the lens. And then where the two lines cross, that is your image. And then you need to compare it to the original object. Now, because it's underneath the line, we know that the image is inverted. If I draw it accurately, the actual height of the arrow, so from here to here, compared with that, believe it or not, would have been shorter, so therefore we know that the image formed is smaller, or we could write diminished, if you're feeling fancy, because that means smaller. And then because it's formed after the lens, then we know our image is real. If they ask you for an example of a lens which works like this, then you can talk about the eye or a camera or something like that. This time our object arrow has moved in a little bit so it should affect the image formed. So again we're going to draw from the top of the object arrow, nice horizontal line, to meet the lens and then make it go through that focal point. Next up we're adding a diagonal line straight through, like that. Add arrows, I think I forgot to add arrows on the other one to show the direction that the rays are going. And then where they cross, that's where our image is formed. Again it's below the line so we know that it's inverted. I've drawn this one a bit better, so it's bigger than the original arrow here. So this is much larger than this, which means that we have a larger image formed. So I'm going to write enlarged. And because it's formed after the lens again, it's real. And an example of this is a projector. This one's slightly different. We can see that the object arrow is now moved between the focal point and the lens. So we're going to see a slightly different thing happening, but it doesn't matter. You can still use the same process horizontal line to the lens. Then we're going to take the line down through that focal point and then from here on this is why it's a bit confusing because if I then draw the diagonal line here you can see those rays are never ever going to meet on the right hand side ever. They're just going to keep going and going and going. So what you want to do is take a, your ruler and carry on the lines and make them dotted. Make it nice and straight unlike what I'm doing. Do the same here, and then eventually they'll cross, and that's actually where your image will be formed, up here. So I'm going to draw the arrow. So now let's discuss what we can see. Well, because it's the same, not the same height, but it's upright, it's the same direction as the object arrow was facing, we know that it's upright. Because the arrow is much larger, we know that it's enlarged. But because it's formed before the lens, we know it must be a virtual image. And an example of this would be the magnifying glass. and your arrows will go this way. Now this time it's much much harder than the previous examples. So first of all you're going to draw your horizontal line like I said here. Then we're going to leave it and we're going to draw the diagonal line as always here. However the difference is this time that because it's the convex lens and the image will therefore be formed before the lens you're therefore going to take a line from the focal point in front of the lens, there. And that's how you're going to draw it. Now where those lines cross here is where your image will be formed. It's the same direction, the image arrow, as the object arrow, so we know it's upright. We can see it's much shorter, so therefore it's going to be smaller or diminished. And because it's formed in front of the lens, we know we have a virtual image. That one's hard, but remember it's kind of similar. We've drawn the horizontal line, but rather than taking it down here, we're taking it through here, and the diagonal line here stays the same. So I'm now going to show you an exam question or two to try and help you see what's going on a bit better. 7a. Some people have an eye defect called long sight. State one cause of long sight. Remember that's what I said happens to older people when they struggle to read books and things. And I said it's because their rays aren't converging properly on the retina. And what's happening here is that they're converging behind the retina. So clearly two things could be at fault here. Either the eyeball is too short 
or as in the case of most older people, it's because their lens isn't focusing properly because it's lost some of its strength. So you could write here, the eyeball is too short or the lens is too weak. Part two, long sight can be corrected by surgery. During surgery, the surgeon may need to cut and heat very delicate parts of the eye. That sounds horrendous. Name the piece of equipment which provides the energy source needed to do this. Remember, it's called laser eye surgery, so we need a laser here. I don't want to do 7B, I don't think it's helpful. 7C, an object O is very near to a convex lens as shown in figure 15. Complete figure 15 to show how the rays of light from the object form an image. So the crucial thing here is it's this sort of it's this sort of lens here. So remember that it's a nice straightforward one, which means we're going to take the first line here, the horizontal line, to the lens, and we're going to make it go through that focal point down there. Next up, we're drawing the diagonal line, which passes down here. And clearly, those lines are never going to cross, so we're going to use our ruler to trace back those lines up here. And then they'll cross, and that's where your image will be formed. Draw the arrow showing the image, and it's there. And if I actually scroll down, I can see that the next question would be describe the image formed. So what can we see? We can see that that arrow is much larger than the original object arrow. So we know that the image is enlarged. It's facing the same direction, which means it's upright. But because it's in front of the lens, we know that it's a virtual image. 4C, figure 7 shows light rays travelling into a human eye. Give the name of the defect shown in figure 7. So we've got our light rays coming in, and they're not meeting on the retina, are they? They're meeting far too early, which tells us that this person is short-sighted and that this lens is working too well or that the eyeball is too long. Because imagine if you sheared it off here, then the eyeball would be much shorter. So we know that part of the problem is the eyeball is too long. So give the name of the defect of vision shown in figure 7. Well, that's short-sightedness, or if you're feeling fancy, you could write myopia. 4C part 2, a concave lens can be used to correct the defect of vision shown. Complete the ray diagram in figure 8 to show how the concave lens produces an image. Use an image to represent the image. Whew, this is when it starts getting hard. So we see we've got a totally different type of lens here. So, never mind, we can do this. We're going to start by drawing the horizontal line here. But because we've got a totally different type of lens, we are not going to take it down here. No, 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 no. Instead, we're going to do a dotted line down here to this focal point. Next up, we're going to draw the nice diagonal line, which is, as we know, nice and easy to do. So that's going to come down here. And then we can see where those lines have crossed. It's here. So that's our image because it's facing the same direction as the object. So here and here, we know that it's upright. It's much shorter than the original object arrow, so we know it's diminished or smaller. And it's formed in front of the lens, which means it's a virtual image.